it's time to start playing scales. Now there are a lot of resources about what scales are and how they're constructed, so I'm not going to cover any of that here. You can just go look for that information if you need it. What I'm going to work on is how we play them here on our instrument. C major is visually our simplest scale. It's just a straight line from C to C. So let's put our arms down, put them up flat over the instrument, pop them up to where our wrist is comfortable, and we're just going to play that straight line all up with the right hand and all down with the left hand. So we go with the right hand, even in consistent tone, I'm going to only play in my end spots and my bizarro end spots. And I'm listening for that same resonant sound, note to note, trying not to move up and down on the bars very much. So as we look at the keyboard, the space from one bar to the next is called a step. If you zigzag chromatically and hit every note on the instrument, those are half steps. If you go every other bar, those are whole steps. Every major scale has the same pattern of whole steps and half steps. You have the first note, and then you go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So it's very much like a seven digit phone number. So let's play C major again, and we're gonna say those whole steps out loud. So we start on note one, and then we go up a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And you'll notice that the half steps are between E and F, and then between B and C. If you can follow this pattern of whole and half steps, you can start on any note on the instrument and generate a major scale. That means, technically speaking, you can play all 12 major scales right now. This is a huge advantage that we have over our wind and string playing colleagues. They have a lot of other skills that they have to master before they're capable of catching up to play all 12 of their scales. If you go back to C, we can count up in that scale, one, two, three, four. Now we're on the note F, and that's the next scale. So if you start the pattern on F, one, whole, whole, half, we're gonna get to a B flat, which is the new note for this key. As we set this whole thing up together, we're gonna remember that the mallets are friends. We're gonna push them across together. So we go one, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and back down. Push across, whole, if, you're, if it's unclear, just go like this and make sure that your mallet heads stay friends as you push forward and back over those notes. We're going to start again one more time on F, and we're going to make sure we're playing in our end spots or our bizarro end spots. In this case, when we're practicing push and pull, I like to go all the way across to my next bizarro end spot just to make the point in my arms. One, push, pull, and back down. Push, pull. And I'm listening to that even tone on every note, making sure I have a similar resonance all the time. Practice this as much as you need to make sure you're really getting it. From F, we're going to count up one, two, three, four again, and now we're to B flat. Now I'm noticing that this is getting up pretty high on my instrument, so I'm going to take the whole thing down an octave so I can listen to it more easily. The B flat scale starts already pushed out, so the first thing I'm going to do is pull. One. To stay here pushed out and then come back push pull push and stay notice that i'm not saying my step pattern backwards because i'm trying to remember visually what i did on the way up this is try i'm trying to improve my visual memory of what each scale looks like good news there are no additional motions to learn forward and back you're either going to go in a straight line you're going to push and pull for a single note or you're going to push and stay at a level and then pull back later. Remember at the end of each scale to count one, two, three, four in that scale and that's the next key you're going to start on. If you repeat that pattern enough times, eventually it's going to bring you all the way back around to see where you started. If you have a limited amount of time to practice, you can play just these three scales and get all the basic gestural concepts that you need. I do still recommend, however, that you learn all 12 major scales because the combinations of patterns that are in there are really centrally important to your development as a keyboard player.